the world's biggest democracy is soon to have its 16th census. Almost one-fifth of the world's population is to be counted, a mammoth undertaking. Every 10 years, India takes up this massive exercise. With so many people living in different places and speaking so many different languages, it really cannot be easy. And yet somehow, we are able to do it. But how? How is the census conducted in India? All these people carrying these bags are enumerators, the ones who go from one house to another collecting census data. Most of them are school teachers. In 2011, these enumerators went to 240 million households in more than 6 lakh villages and 8,000 towns. But the census process began much before these people walked into our houses. Census is a complex multi-stage activity which is conducted across the country with clockwork precision. To get a better understanding of the whole thing, we talked to Professor Vikas, who has been researching and writing extensively about the census. So sir, can you tell us about the process of the census? The census is conducted in many stages across the country. All these processes take place under the census organization headed by the Registrar General and Census Commissioner of India, whose office is in New Delhi. Each state gets a director of census operations with their office in the state capital. One of their first tasks is the release of several circulars. These go out almost four years before the actual census. They ask for the list of any changes that might have taken place in the state, like any new towns created or villages formed, change in administrative boundaries or change in interstate boundaries. The entire initial exercise is geared towards getting the map right. After this notification is out, you cannot change the names of districts. You cannot change the boundaries of districts. From here, the Census Committee begins its next step, map preparation. The Census Committee collects available maps from the district officials. They then update them and digitalize them using GIS technology. The entire country is divided into these blocks called enumeration blocks, which are small areas having 120 to 150 households or a maximum of 800 people. In 2011, India was divided into 2.47 million enumeration blocks. Alongside this, the Census Committee is also busy preparing questionnaires. In every census, the number and types of questions in the questionnaires have changed. So these questions are decided based on the context in which the census is happening. Yes, for instance, you know, in, in one of the latest uh, census schedules, you have a column for your mobile phone number. This wouldn't have been there in 1991. In 1872, the question on occupation was only canvassed for males, not for females. So you see how census questionnaires are deeply informed by the social context in which you would ask questions. The prepared questions are then pre-tested. Tests are done to see how the enumerators understand and ask these questions and how the respondents answer. The directors of census operations then have a national meeting where they share their learnings. After a couple of these conferences, the questionnaires and a tabulation plan are finalized. After this, the enumerators are trained. In the 2011 census, 2.7 million enumerators and supervisors were trained by 54,000 master trainers using different methods. 5.4 million instruction manuals were printed in 18 different languages. All to make the census operations more effective. Census is then widely publicized. There is use of advertisements across TVs, radios, newspapers, billboards, Facebook and Twitter. Publicity is also done in local languages using folk songs and dances. These famous personalities have been seen publicizing the census. It's not a small activity. If you think of it, it is much larger than the largest ad campaign of any private company. Now that the back work is all set, the actual process of collecting data begins. This happens in two phases. The first is the house listing and housing census that happens between April and September. Enumerators go from one house to another, carrying these big questionnaires. These have questions mostly about the house type, assets and amenities. Each possible answer is given a code and based on the responses, the enumerators write in the code for the answers given. The data received in this phase is used by the census organization to further update their maps. Now comes the main phase, population enumeration that happens in the month of February for most of India. The enumerators again go to each household carrying large questionnaires. But this time, the questions are different from those asked in the first phase. In 2011, 29 questions
questions were asked in this phase. They were mostly about family, marital status, identity, literacy, economic activities, migration and fertility. Small stickers are placed on the houses that have been enumerated. Once all the houses are covered on the 28th February, that is on the last day of the collection phase, the houseless population is enumerated. Now that we have all this data collected over a month, what if there are changes? For that, there is a revisional round. From 1st to the 5th March, enumerators go back to the houses and ask if there have been any deaths or births. The necessary changes are then made on the questionnaires. All this data is then meticulously packed and sent to data centers. Here, the questionnaires are scanned. Using intelligent character recognition technology, the answers are digitized, the data is processed and tables are created. From this data, the census organization releases a report called the Provisional Population Totals. If you see this report, this is the most important product of census in a way because it comes out at a lightning speed within one month of enumeration. The provisional population totals contains not all but a lot of data collected during the census including urban rural population, sex ratio and literacy. After they have done all this, the census organization is also interested in seeing if they have made any mistakes. For that, there is the post-enumeration survey. The census organization replicates its data collection exercises in sample areas to evaluate the results of the census process. India is one of the few countries which has never missed the census ever. But given our day of COVID, the 2021 census has been pushed. And we don't really know when it'll happen. But whenever these folks come knocking on your doors, you now know the immensity of this operation.